Okay, so I thought this was going to be a better uh, product review than it's probably turning out to be, and I thought this would be a machine that I could I could really roll through with and um, do some some very basic um, cutting and engraving. And, and sadly, I just don't think it's going to hold up to the very basic needs that I have. Um, uh, and it's not to say this isn't for everyone, but I do think that there is a technical issue with this machine. And I don't know that it's happening. I don't think it's happening on all machines. I think it happens to be the one I purchased from Amazon. And no shade on Amazon or anything. I just, I don't know. Something's wonky with this. So pros and cons real fast. It's the, the Atom Stack P7. Uh, it goes together fairly well. I have an unboxing video, but I don't think I'm even going to waste time with it. Um, the the X-axis comes pre-assembled. The Y-axis belt here is mostly pre-assembled. So it comes out of the box, you slide the x-axis on the y-axis, you put on the feet, you connect up some cables, uh, you put in, there's maybe like four screws to the whole thing, put on some little patty feet, comes with this little bottom um, laser laser material to you know protect your substrate, uh, and then the laser head. And um, <clears throat> so overall, not a, not a horrible uh, put together process. Um, there is a little bit of function with like the, the, the belt assembly down here um, and that the instructions aren't great so you gotta hopefully there's some better unboxing videos if you really want to go forward and buy this thing. Uh, the laser is adjustable up and down here. Uh, this uh, this assembly actually poses an issue that I'll, I'll cover in a second. Um, so overall good it does connect with light burn no problem, laser gerbil no problem and I even got it to connect with laser web. Um, so there are lots of options for controlling the laser uh, which is really nice. Um, so you don't have to spend money on on light on light burn if you don't want to. But um, there's lots of reasons that you would. So uh, I won't go into that. Um, control is pretty good. Um, there's a belt adjustment, belt tension adjustment here for the X, and belt tension adjustment is here um, on this stepper motor for the Y. Um, uh, even then, it's a little bit jerky at high speeds. It goes, it's a little bit jerky and, and whatever. But, you know, diode lasers, you're running pretty slow, so it's not that big a deal. Here's the issue I have. So I noticed something odd when connected to light burn. And this only seemed to happen exclusively when I was connected to light burn. So I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not sure if it's a machine issue or a software issue, but when I unplugged the machine from light burn or from my computer in general, uh, the problem went away. But I did notice in certain positions. So, like, if I was in the front left, the laser light would come on and be powered let me modify this the laser light would come on and be powered no problem uh, when it actually started moving into this position and over into here power to the laser head would cut off it would go that there's a red light here a status light that shines bright when it's active and running the fan runs and I would notice when it got into a position around in here about in the middle the light would get really really dim and the fan would completely cut off and so the head would move because it was running the stepper motors but the laser wouldn't fire. And I thought, well, that's odd. So I looked all over the place for shorts or loose connections or anything, couldn't find anything. And finally, when I unplugged from the from light burn, um, the problem went away. I could move it anywhere, and I still got, had constant power to the laser as far as the light blinking up here. Reconnected, reset uh, light burn, problem went away. So maybe not a huge deal, but um, you know, in the middle of a job, it'd be kind of a pain in the butt. And then with some of their test pieces here, so they send you some test stuff, and this is like two millimeter acrylic, and it's it's opaque black. And I uh, after um, it probably took ten passes to cut through this at full power, at maybe ten millimeters per second. Um, so again, you know, I'm not going for speed. Um, as long as it cut through, I could deal with it. So with their opaque black, uh, no problem. Um, so then I started doing some engravings and some other testing, things like that. Um, this was just some, just some engravings on here. No big deal, right? Just to sort of test its accuracy. And I was really more just trying to dial in settings. These little keycaps. Um, and, and the detail is, is really good, uh, when you're engraving. Um, and then I started noticing something. And it's hard to tell, um, in here. I don't know how much I can zoom in here and see. And it's, but, so the top portion and the bottom portion, those lines are, are good and dark. And as you get to this area and this area, the lines are really starting to lighten up a little bit. So I thought, well, okay, that's just the wood grain, whatever. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll continue testing something else. Um, 
And I started noticing that more and more and more. And so I started doing some cutout pieces here, some test cutouts. And let's see if that'll focus. So again, different piece of wood completely. And you can see that this is really dark up here, really dark down here, uh, and not so dark right there. And things, and this is, you know, after probably 15 passes, couldn't get it to, uh, to do anything. Then you get over on the back and you can see what's going on. So you have some portions where the, the laser power uh, is greater, um, either horizontally or vertically, whatever. Sorry, let me back this out. And so it would cut through partially and not the other side. And again, this is like, no joke, 15, 20 passes on 100% at um, something like 10 or 15 millimeters, 10 millimeters per second. Uh, I did finally get a couple of to, to cut out, but to the large majority, um, it was it was difficult. Some of the smaller pieces, I, I was able to get them cut out, and I, I did add my little K40 blade bed here, so unbeknownst to me, these actually work pretty good for these dial lasers with an adjustable head. So just to get it up and off of the surface, because you'll get, you'll get a lot of backflash with this little laser material that they give you, or any material that you put it down. So this is one that I did without. This is the backside. You can see there's a lot of charring and stuff like that. And then I was able to actually get a couple of these cut out, and you can see it's a lot, a lot cleaner. Uh, it's not super clean, but it's a lot cleaner on the backside. So that was a plus. So on some of their sample pieces, I was able to cut out with a lot of passes. So I went over to Tap Plastics. I bought some three millimeter acrylic, which is really only like a little over two and a half millimeters or something, right? And did some other chest pieces. And you can see, getting the same top and bottom dark, sides not so much. Let me flip this over. So, and this is after a lot of passes, like 20 passes. Full power, 20 passes, 10 millimeters a second. And then, I don't know, it's probably not going to show up. We'll see. But you can also tell that, you know, everything in the top, this whole top section, this whole bottom section, is are good and dark. And then anything on the sides here is really, really light. So, in the x-axis, as the laser head's moving around, it's losing power here, picking up power, losing power here, and it did that consistently. It did not matter which uh, which G-code I used, or if I used light burner, if I used laser web, or if I used uh, laser gerbil. It didn't matter. Um, I had the same thing here, where these look like they're nice and um, uh, uniform, but actually there there is a slight difference where this top this top portion and bottom portion are much darker. And again, you can see here that's these two marks here. Top and bottom, I could get it to almost cut through, but the sides no go. So. <clears throat> I think the long and the short of it is um, easy to put together, fairly simple to use if you have a little bit of know-how from you know any G-code stuff. I th and I think if you're only doing engraving um, on pre-cut parts, probably good enough. Um, if you want to do any cutting, um, I would. I am not going to recommend. Um, I think that there are other other versions out here, other versions of lasers that are probably a bit more powerful. This is supposed to have that newfangled, you know, uh, laser shaping technology. So on a five watt laser, get it down to a really fine point, and you know, it's able to it's supposed to be able to to cut better uh, materials. Now again, I'm not I'm not looking to cut anything big or super fast. I don't care about any of that stuff, right? I, I know this is not a a, a, a CO2 laser. I know it's not going to have the same speed, and for me, I wasn't looking for it. But I did expect it to hold up to its claims at least a little bit. So I think there's technically something going on a little bit with this machine, because again, it's not because it's not cutting consistently with the consistent power all the way around. Uh, there's something going on, so this guy's going back, and um, I may just go ahead and bite the bullet and and buy a CO2. So anyway. Um, Cannot recommend.